until Zuhur prayer to pray Zuhur, Asr, Maghrib and Isha to spend the night there and to pray Fajr prayer the next day which is the night of Zul Hijjah. That is Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after Fajr on ninth of Zul Hijjah, the Hujjaj Kiram, they are leaving and departing for Arafat. So they come to Arafat. They stay here in Arafat. Stay in Arafat as far as. As I mentioned, if somebody will miss it, so it means that he missed the Hajj. And that stay time is the whole ninth day of Zul Hijjah and the night in between 9th and 10th until dawn break. Whatever time a brother or sister made it, so he it, it means that he performed the Arafah and he performed the Hajj as well. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave a few sermons in his Hajj. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his lifetime, he performed only one Hajj. As long as he was staying there in Mecca. So they were going sometime to Haram Sharif and they were performing their Ibadah. But Hajj was not for us at that time. But as the Arab as a whole, they claim that they are the followers of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. They used to come for Hajj and doing Hajj in their own way. And what was their Hajj? They were making tawaf whole, holy, solely naked. And number two, they were clapping there and whistling there. وَمَا كَانَ الصَّلَاةُ مَعِنْدَ الْبَيْتِ إِلَّا مُكَاءً وَتَصْدِيَةً And they were performing their tawaf naked. So then Sayyidina Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عنه, when he was leading the Hajj delegate on the ninth, of, uh, ninth year after uh, Hijra, and he came here to Mecca Muazzama from Medina. And Rasulullah sent Sayyidina Ali after him because he received 32 ayat of Surah Tawbah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared that any treaty which was there with the non-Muslims, now that treaty is null and white. So the non-Muslims can move around for four months. After four months, we are not bound by any treaty because you cheated us a few times. And number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجَسٌ فَلَا يَقْرَبُ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ That mushrikeen are filth, so they cannot come to Masjid al-Haram. Now based on that hadith, that ayah of Surah Tawbah, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi, he does not allow any non-Muslim to enter into the hudud of haram. And hudud of haram from all around that has a different distance. From somewhere that is 8 mile and from somewhere that is 15 or 16 mile. So that is called haram. And haram has its own respect to the mufti of Mecca. At that time, Ata ibn Abi Rabah radiallahu ta'ala an, he says that uh, Al-Haram kulluhu masjid. That Haram land is a whole that is masjid. So Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbar rahmatullahi alayhi, he applied the ayah literally. And he said that no any non-Muslim can enter to the land of Haram inside the Mu'aqid. But the other three Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik and Imam, ah, Imam Shafi, rahimahumullah, they say the application of this ayah in accordance with the interpretation and announcement or declaration by Abu Bakr. Razi Allah Ta'ala at that time when Ali recited these ayahs. Razi Allah Ta'ala anhum ajma'een. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, Ala la yahujjanna ba'da hadha al-ghami bil bayti mushrik wa la yatufanna bil bayti huryan. That after this very year, no mushrik is allowed to come for Hajj to Mecca. And no naked is allowed to roam around the house of Allah. So now these three Imams are of the view that Zahirun Nas is that they cannot come for Hajj. But Dalalatun Nas is that they cannot reside and live inside the land of Haram.
as far as their increased concern. So with the permission of the authentic authority, they can come to the land of Haram for less than three days and night, but they cannot stay here for three days and night or more. Anyhow, that was a fifth issue which I mentioned. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he received the farziyah of Hajj, according to Abu Hanifa, that was the ninth year of Hajj. But Imam Shafi said that Hajj became farz on sixth year after Hijrah. Because that is mentioned there in Surah al maidah So Imam Abu Hanifa Ramatullah says, if that is the case, that Maida was in sixth year after Hijrah, and there Allah mentioned the Haram and its Hurma, and thus the Hajj is considered farz on sixth year of Hijrah. So why not on the second year of Hijrah, where the details are mentioned there in Surah Al-Baqarah, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received Surah Al-Baqarah in second year. So anyhow, Imam Shafi Ramatullah Alayhi is of the view, but Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never performed Hajj after sixth year of, never came here. But Imam Abu Hanifa Ramatullah Alayhi says, Hajj became farz on ninth year after Hijrah. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent Muslims under the leadership of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he was Amir al-Hajj. Why the Prophet Sallallahu did not come? Because of two reasons. Number one, that Hajj was not falling in the month of Zul Hijjah. Because at that time, this Makkah and surrounding area was in the control of Bakkans and they were playing games with Takwim and with calendar as well. They were taking one month to another one and one season to another season. Allah said, Naman Naseeqo Ziyaratun Fil Kufr. So as the Hajj was not falling in its proper month, so that was one reason. Number two, as Mushrikeen were coming on that very year, so they were naked and they were clapping and whistling. Prophet ﷺ was not going to mingle with them in Hajj, but at least he was giving a message to the non-Muslims that now Haram is for Muslims only. So thus he sent Abu Bakr with the delegation of Hujjaj Kiram and they came and performed Hajj. Now the next year, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he announced that we are going for Hajj. So all Sahaba, one riwayah, it is said, 124,000 Sahaba. But another riwayah says 140,000 Sahaba. So they joined Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at least he gave three major sermons in that Hajj. And the famous one, that was here in Arafat. So in Arafat, we, you can call the sermon of the Prophet Sallallahu the Human Charter. And if you will study that charter, and then you will look into the articles of League of Nations and now of UNO, so you will find out that they have copied that khutbah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked the Sahaba, and look at me, my dear respected brothers and sisters. As you know, at that time, no Mukabbir Asot and Maik was there. So 140,000 Sahaba. But there were two Sahaba, they were Jahiru Saw. They were natural loudspeakers on natural mic. One Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib and the second one Muhaz ibn Jabal. They both had a commanding voice. So they were standing there in the middle of the gathering. When Prophet ﷺ was saying a sentence, so he was giving it a pause. And these two Sahaba, they were conveying that message to the gathering. So Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Ayyuhannas, O people, now Sahaba were that much accurate in narration of the words of Rasulullah ﷺ, that they put their own words before Yaqulu Rasulullah ﷺ, Ya Ayyuhannas. This address is not from our side. This address is from the messenger of Allah. So he said, Ayyuhannas, O all the people and all the mankind. And Prophet ﷺ said, Atadrun. Ayyu yawm in haza, wa ayyu shahr in haza, wa ayyu balad in haza. Do you know what day you are there in? And do you know what month you are there in? And do you know what place you are there in? So Sahaba Rizalullah alayhi majma'in, they were answering every single question. So they said, al yawm al-haram, the very respected day, the ninth of the hijjah. And the number two was shahr al-haram. The month of the hijjah is the honored and respected month. And what balad al-haram, and this Makkah Muazzama, that is al-balad al-haram. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah harram alaykum, dima'akum, wa amwalakum, wa a'radakum, your blood, your wealth, and your honor are as respected to for each other. 
is, this day is, this month is, and this place, this place is. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he delivered here the famous khutbah, where he gave the dars of equality. He said, Allah, la farzali arabiyan ala ajami. There is no uh, mean virtue for a Arab over a non-Arab, or for a non-Arab over a Arab. Wala li aswala ala ahmar, not to a black one over a white one. Wala li ahmar ala aswala, not to for a red one over a black one. Illa bi taqwa, but only how much piety and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have. And then he recited here, Ayyuh Nas, Inna khalaqnakum min zakarin wa unsa, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. In that hunt and also here in that khutbah, Rabbi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khuzu anni manasikakum. Learn from me how to perform your Hajj. Learn from me how to perform your Hajj. And then he said, La Ali, La Al Kakum fi Makami Hava Abadan. Maybe next in future I will never meet you people here in this place. And Abu Bakr Ridatana, he broke in tears. That next year in Hajj time, Prophet Sallallahu he will not be with us. And here, Jibril Amin came. And he brought the ayah of Surah Al-Maidah, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورزيت لكم الإسلام دينا That this day we have perfected for you who are free. وأتممت عليكم نعمتي And I have completed on you my favor ورزيت لكم الإسلام دينا And in Islam as a system and dean I have chosen for you people. So my dear respected brother and sister in Islam, we came here, now this visit of ours, it has nothing to do with Umrah, nor it has any religious significance. That you will say that this was for us, or this is wajib, or this is sunnah, or this is mustahab. But to, to tell you the truth, now I am thinking it should not become a bid'ah. Later on the next generation they will be thinking of that, oh this is a part of it, but this is not a part of Ibadah. Yes, we went to Taif, that was not a part of Ibadah, it's coming back. We made it as an Ibadah because we performed Umrah. Now we are visiting Arafat, yeah, historical significance is here. So we came here to this area. Yes, this area and this place has religious significance, but that is on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. The day and the place, then that is religious significance. Otherwise, this is a historical place. So this mountain is called the Jabal al rahma When Prophet Sallallahu was delivering his khutbah, he was sitting on his she-camel. And that she-camel was named al Aswa. So that al Aswa was just like the member of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was sitting upon and he was delivering this khutbah. So on 9th of the Hijjah, to stay here, the whole day, and especially after Zuhur, after Asr. But for this, I have done, if somebody became late and he came at night in between 9 and 10, but before dawn break. So if his for this, I have done, his, even Imam Muhani Faramatullah said, if somebody, he, uh, mean, he got fainted, and he was not in sense, but he was in a crime and he attended the hajj. So the people have to bring him on stretcher here and to stay here. So even though he was not feeling anything, he was half dead, but still his wukuf is done and his hurry has done.